Welcome back. The first five videos I've uploaded seem to be doing really well and I'm really enjoying the comments from everybody. Um, so please keep them coming, any advice, any suggestions. One of the issues of course is that I pre-recorded uh, pre most of the footage you're seeing uh, a couple of months ago or a couple of months before I'm releasing it. I, um, it took me until November to build up the courage to release everything. So many of your suggestions have already been sorted, implemented, um, but definitely they are really, really useful and encouraging. So please keep them coming. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel and click the notify and even like the video if you're enjoying them. It really helps and encourages content makers like myself to actually keep doing it. Episode six is all about keeping the line straight. And I also attack the pond more uh, with frustration. Um, I start a, a one man war against Ivy. Uh, it's sad, but true. There is too much Ivy around the pond. And uh, I've also uh, started to realize I have a growing problem, and I mean seriously growing problem, with the amount of weeds that I've pulled out. What to do with them? Look at the piles. Let's have a look. another sunny morning and the traffic's loud again and there's a breeze so I don't know if you can hear me above everything else so I've just come down the allotment just to see what's going on quick look at my peas I'll show you them in a second yeah they all look good I can't see many being chewed up by there's not yeah there's no evidence of mice or other activities now as you know I all uh, I got some kale for someone and I ordered some netting off Amazon and um, it turned up it was cheap I should have known better than to buy cheap. But then again, I'm poor. You know, what do poor people do? Um, and I'm not impressed with it. I'll put down the details and stuff and um, etc. in the thing underneath. Now, I've ordered some uh, builder's scaffold netting instead. Now that I've ordered cheap again on that because, you know, the real stuff is like 30 to 40 quid uh, a roll. Uh, and I just can't afford 30 or 40 quid for netting. But I've ordered uh, a large one for about £16. So again, I'll put in all the details and I'll give an opinion of it when it arrives uh, so that everybody can see what uh, is going on. Um, yeah. Now, unfortunately, the, uh, because it's been such a glorious September, a lot of people have been down to their plots to, to do various things, various activities. So, and one person specifically asked that I don't film him. Uh, I don't know, he, he's uh, elderly and has a suspicion of the internet. Uh, I didn't go into details, I mean, uh, you know, for me, I don't like confrontation, so I'm not going to give any uh, discussion on it. And people are uh, entitled to their own theories and opinions. So what I'm going to do today, let me show you. There we go. There's the peas. All glorious. So I'm going to do that middle section of um, puff. Uh, as you see, it bells out deep inside that uh, thing. So I'm going to pull this string tight and get digging, basically, and um, straighten that bit. Now, it does take it out of me because it's bending down a lot. Um, and in fact, I did the last bit kneeling down, just using the uh, uh, fork as a, a hand fork. But there you go. So I'm going to get on with it. Uh, again, this will be a, a silent mu uh, time lapse music to video. To, uh, 
I'll say that again in English. This will be a, a, a time-lapsed video with a little bit of music background. Uh, you don't want to see me digging for two hours. Uh, and then we'll take it from there. Um, I did actually measure the plots, actually, thinking about it. Um, there are 15 plots. Sorry, 15 rows of plots. Uh, number one, my one, ba -ba -ba -ba, measures out at 330 square meters. But of course, it's difficult to, that's not including the pond, and it's difficult to actually say how much of that pond is not included. You know, do you go from the actual tree, or do you go from like a meter inside the tree? So it's very difficult to actually say. But let's say 330. By far the largest is the plot opposite me, number nine, which goes all the way to the back. And that's over 500 square meters of plot. The next biggest one appears to be the empty one, the derelict one, although it doesn't seem very deep. It goes as, just as far as that shed there. Um, it's very wide. It's one of the widest on the actual site. And then there are two in that bottom corner are very big as well. Um, so there you go. So. These are the biggest plots, but yeah, 500 square meters. Yeah, he's done by a husband and wife. There is somebody actually working on that plot, so I'll just go over there a bit. Um, it is done by husband and wife, so uh, they do take uh, a lot of time. They've been doing it for 50 odd years, I think they said. Uh, I can't remember. 50 odd years, I think. They had been in the uh, village all their lives, took up allotments in there when they got married in their early 20s or something like that, I can't remember there we go, so I'm going to carry on and do this and we'll see how we get on left you running all that time. Um, one of the neighbours called me across and, and uh, gave me a cut off of raspberry. Basically raspberries grow into great big clumps at the base. I have to interject at this point, the guy on the telly, <laughs> this guy that you're watching doesn't know what he's talking about. The neighbour actually gave me a rhubarb. <laughs> he gave me a, um, a cut off of his rhubarb that he was thinning. <laughs> It wasn't raspberry at all. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He continues. And new shoots come off it each year, making it larger. So if you get your shovel, put it in the right place and then dig it out, you can get a, a, a crop of um, raspberry roots, which you easily transplant. I've just transplanted them up the back there. I don't know if you caught that. But we'll see if they actually uh, start growing. And um, what I'll do is I'll put a little note in, uh, label in there to say it was donated by them, just so people know that there's some good people around. Um, I'm going to carry on and carry on digging out this. Um, carry, carry on twice. I'm going to carry on and dig out this border. <laughs>
let this just go there for a second. Too much on the fork, bending over. Heart can't pump. But know your limits. <laughs> <laughs> know your limits. You know, uh, it's great exercise for people with heart conditions. Just know your limits and um, little and often rather than uh, trying to tackle the world's problems all at once. Right, I'm going to. Ooh, some growth. I'm going to go and now use my fork to get rid of all the weed with my makeshift wheelbarrow. Uh, so I'll catch you in a second. More seconds. Oh, gee. First, I'm going to hydrate. If you watched my previous videos, you mentioned you notice I say I enjoy um, this soil, but it's uh, you know it's beautiful dry, got a lovely feel to it, but there's no worms. And um, Pete, you know, and I'm pretty certain it's because of the dry weather, they've all gone deeper, deep down. And I've just been digging, and I'm beginning to see worms again. Beautiful worms. Oh, glorious. I'm not sure you're going to pick this up. Look at that monster. That is ugly, isn't it? Look at it. Oh, that's like something out of Aliens 5 or Aliens 27. I forget now because they stopped naming them aliens and they give them all different names, don't they? Right, there you go. I'm going to go and uh, put that in the bug hotel. I'll put it under. Oh no, it's pooed on me. Look, it's pooed. Oh, go away. Go down there. Bug poop. Right, I'm going to stop uh, video now because there's lots of people on the allotment. So when I've finished, I'll show you around later on when it's quieter. I'll see you later. That's uh, the next section finished. I'm really pleased. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this for now. I'll tidy it all up in the spring, and I'm going to wear it there are like not straight bits so I'll add in some earth each day when it's uh, moist so it sticks and build it up and then hopefully the grass will grow back over the top uh, I'm going to start the other side uh, sometime soon but the first thing I'm going to do this afternoon on my return because it's now 22 degrees and getting warmer in the midday sun up in the sun's gone behind a cloud call me an eye uh, is I'm going to dig in the raspberries and I'll show you where those are going to go later on. Just clearing some more weed around the, uh, the pond and look who I found. A friend. Where is he? He's hidden. He's hidden. He's hidden. Just trying to work out where I am. There, okay. There he is. Look at that colour, camouflage and colouring. Isn't he gorgeous? Hey, sweetheart. Are you going to come and eat all the slugs for me? There we go. I'll leave him be tonight. There we go. So, ivy will compete with itself. It will compete with the trees and plants. And the trouble is, uh, the longer and more invasive the ivy gets, the further and further it has to go in order to get moisture and nutrients uh, its roots can spread you know oh, what is it, 10 feet 10 meters i don't know a long way and the more it competes the more trees will compete and of course the tree roots can go even further just because there's no moisture because the ivy is taking it all and people will argue uh, yeah but you're destroying a, an eco culture there there's going to be ladybirds and all other things in growing in there. Yeah, this is true. But in an invasive species will stop other species being um, or gaining root and growing. Things like uh, flowers, wild flowers, which we need desperately on the allotment to attract uh, things that are going to, you know, like bees and uh, other, what's the word? Um, 
not propagators, uh, you know the word I mean. I'll think of it, I'll flash it up on screen by the time I thought of it, if I haven't thought of it already. Now if you look down here, there's beautiful eye, uh, what would they be, iris? I don't know, some sort of um, plant that enjoys being around uh, water. But of course it's being choked in by everything else, so we'll make sure that that has enough room to grow. I'll plant more, I'll get different ones in. Uh, I'll plant wildflowers, spring bulbs, poppies, maybe even lavender to give it a, you know, a nice refreshing. Uh, so the, all the bees and the other insects that uh, are really helpful can come along and, uh, and help us. Yes, it looks messy at the moment. Yes, I'm getting rid of lots of uh, ladybug sanctuaries and things. But the end result is we'll have far more of a diverse um eco culture than just having one invasive species of ivy on one side and, and one on uh, brambles and uh, other thistle weeds on another what's the word i'm looking for i forget now anyway so that's it that's why one reason why i'm doing it um uh, just watch the space you know you'll see it grow into a beautiful wildlife living sanctuary i mean one of the things i need to do is clean out all that horrible stinky wood so that the um, wildlife has a proper uh, space to actually to be in. I mean, obviously it doesn't have to be pristine. It's not good to be pristine. But having huge chunks of wood just moulding in there. And that wood is rotten. That's not wood, in fact. That's ivy. And it's rotten. So it needs to come out to give the ecoculture, the actual water... Uh, a chance to be proper pond water and not stagnant mush there we go right show you what i've done so far um now here's an interesting thing i found that my kale that was donated was doing really poorly compared with the other guy's kale who's donated i mean look at it it's very straggly and awful and i think after doing some research my soil is far finer than his. Look at that grass coming through. That'll be hoed tomorrow. Uh, my soil is far finer than his. And I think what's happening is that my uh, kale is drying out far more. Uh, hence the yellow leaves and it looking a bit straggly. So what I'll do is I'll water it every few hours until it takes. And hopefully by then we'll be into a wetter season. I mean, at the moment, the temperatures are still in their 20s in the daytime. And here we are at the beginning of September. Um, I'm not complaining, but the, the ground is. Uh, likewise, here's my leeks. All of them seem to have taken. Uh, there's a couple that are very small that need to be perhaps dug out. Like that one there in the centre. But he seems to be all right, apart from the fact I've just covered him up. Um, I won't uncover him. It's a, it'll blanch out if he still grows. There we go. So they're doing all right. Uh, look at that mound of ivy and weeds. It's huge. And there's another one here. All this has got to be burnt because it's mostly ivy. And there's another one there, look. It's mostly ivy. It's not good for uh, composting in its present form. Uh, I mean, maybe if we mulched it and put it into bags for a year, it'll be compostable. That's a normal compost pile. That's all good compost stuff. Uh, None perennial weeds and no bindweed or anything. All these have got bindweed in. This is cooch grass and bindweed. I'm drying it out. I'll give it a bash, get rid of the excess uh, soil out of it, and then that can go on the burn pile. Because uh, I don't really have the facilities for storing it for two years. More ivy. I tell you, there's so much of this stuff. I mean, it's everywhere. Look, it's here. It's all down this bank. It's just literally crawling its way across the allotment. And it's getting deeper. I mean, look how thick that is. And each one of those is a, a, wheat, uh, a root trying to get moisture. It's Saturday. I've missed a day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yesterday I had to go out for a meeting in the morning. I've got my hair cut. Yay! I feel humid again. 
Uh, and in the afternoon, I had an unexpected visitor, a uh, very enjoyable afternoon with lots of coffee and chat. Um, I did get down to the plot in the early evening and I did some watering and some basic weeding but there were people on the plot including people that have said that they don't like to be videoed so I didn't do any videoing, didn't get a camera out um, but I'll show you what's going on now at the moment the weather is 17 degrees it's not chilly, it's pleasant, it's refreshing uh, I certainly don't need a fleece on uh, you know, and in fact when I start working I'm going to take it off because I'm going to be doing some digging again. But this afternoon is forecast showers and trust me we need it and I'll show you why in a second. Uh, let's reverse the camera and I'll show you the plot. I'm losing the plot. Right, okay, so nothing changed there. Um, this was the bit I dug out of that uh, area that wasn't being used. Uh, still keeping these watering. Look at that bit of pine weed there. Look, look at it. Cheeky. Oh no, it's just a bit straw. It just looks like bindweed because it's white. Uh, I did actually have a quick hoe around there. Just to make sure that all the weeds are gone. I've hoed this area. Um, but it's still going to take a lot more of upkeep to make sure that the weeds don't grow immediately back. But this was the area I um, got rid of the weeds on. You can see all the dead grass and stuff. This is baby grass that was growing. I believe it's kutch. Kutch grass growing. Kutch. 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 Unfortunately, some of the uh, uh, kale has been ravaged by the pigeons and I'm hoping that it will come back. Really hoping. Some of it's perked up again after good, decent watering. Uh, but a couple look as though they're um, struggling a bit. I'll, uh, I'll have a, a trim on that one and see if I can get it uh, looking a bit better. Uh, our random little thing there, I believe it's... Uh, uh, small marrow things, um, courgettes. <gasps> Suspicious. Mmm. Uh, peas. Looking brilliant. I'll have put some pea sticks in. Uh, not a lot of grass growing between them, but you never know. I'll keep an eye on it. But yeah, I'll get some pea sticks in get those growing up. Uh, the inherited plants, the leeks and um, looking, I mean, they're getting better actually, they're getting bigger, definitely getting bigger and the, and the lovely little selection of uh, beetroot. Okay over here, uh, I don't know what to do with the survivors, I mean there are definitely some perking up here look these, this one here and there, over here. Definite survivors amongst all of the um, the dead strawberries. I might lift them and just pot them for the um, the winter. This plot it definitely needs a uh, replacement part for that strimmer. Uh, it should be here in seven days, in fact, exactly seven days next Saturday. So hopefully it'll arrive in time for the weekend. Uh, the freebie. Uh, raspberry plants still getting watered in hopefully they'll take and then we'll have a uh, a nice uh, selection and i'll stream all out at the outside of that as well get it all looking good i might even dig out some of this couch grass at, right on the uh, the corner still not done anything with this part i don't know what to do about this uh, volunteer horseradish it's going to take some digging out and there's that huge pile of um somebody else's I'm guessing uh, allotment stuff again bash it all down see what I can do I'll see what I can do it's all it's not I don't have to have it done tomorrow it's not a marathon it's not a sprint it's a marathon a never ending one but I actually reckon that looks pretty good I really do I think I'm proud of myself for the effort and considering it's one week and six, five days. One week and five days. All right, so it wasn't that bad to start with. So this uh, today, this will be this part here, getting this line sorted out. I'll uh, tighten that string up. I let it loose um, earlier. Right, so what have we got? Well, this is why we need this rain again. Look, the actual pond is drying up again. 
Uh, now I have been researching a lot into pots, uh, uh, two ponds, uh, reading about how to actually maximise potential, make them wildlife havens and stuff. And believe it or not, everybody agrees that this is crap for the pond. It really is. And the reason being, it's oxygen in the water. Um, all of the insects and the wildlife want good oxygenated water. And unfortunately, uh, as these uh, branches and leaves and flotsam and everything else start to break down and mould and degenerate into whatever they're going to degenerate into, they're taking up the oxygen, they're, they're putting uh, other things in the water, especially when the water's this low. So the frogs and things will migrate into the mud and stay there and just stick their little eyes out and go boop, 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 boop. Uh, but yeah over the course of time I will get rid of uh, all of the issues with this pond the other thing that all, everybody agrees on when it comes to discussing ponds is diversity and in my humble opinion there is not enough diversity in this area it needs a lot more all you have are these long weeds brambles and ivy <clears throat> even things like uh Stinging their tools haven't, you know, they, they can't even get uh, an edge in. So we'll be ripping out a lot of this and we'll be replacing it with diverse wildflowers. I mean, on this side, yeah, my side, I'll put in like cutting flowers and things. But along the top and down the ridges, uh, I'll definitely put in natural wildflowers. I mean, there's um, things like water garlic, I believe, uh, and other things you can place around the water's edge. <clears throat> that will attract pollinators, which is the word I couldn't think of the other day. And, uh, you know, get it all down. Now, people have been cops in here. There's plenty of cut trees around um, where people have actually taken the trees down. There's one there. There's more around here. Look. So the actual authorities that maintain this do actually recognise the fact that there are too many trees around here. I mean, look at this one, it's dead. It, it just needs cutting out and um, removing and allowing new growth. So it's all something that we'll get round to. Rome wasn't built in the day, but the trouble is it produced so much stuff and, it, and it's, it isn't things you can compost easy, all this ivy. It will take years to break down and stop uh, growing uh, unless you start using, you know, like, very um, intensive methods to create compost which I don't have the skills or money for because it means a lot of um, black bags which I don't want to use or composting bins which are closed so. um, yeah so that's the, the the plot as it is now I have uh, got some comfrey from another plot holder whether it takes or not is anybody's guess comfrey is pretty uh, hardy and will take easy so i'm hoping that that will take and well at least have a little comfrey bed it probably won't stay there uh, when all this area is finished oh, there it is hey flying over there uh, when all this is finished there'll probably be a long comfrey bed just here maybe a strawberry bed here i don't know you know it's exciting the plot will evolve as I um, get to know it. Uh, one of the things, of course, I have discovered is that this ground is very fine and needs a lot of watering in order to give water moisture. So what we'll be doing over the next year is introducing um, some sort of texture, fibre, to the actual soil to help it with water retention. And, and maybe things like cocoa qua um, and good compost. I mean, horse manure would be great, but uh, I don't know anybody with horse manure. You know, people turn around and say, go up and ask so-and-so. Yeah, I'm, I'm not into going up and asking people. <gasps> Get out! Get out! Oh, no. Oh, it's buying weed. Oh, I've done it now. All right. I'll see you next time, buying weed. Actually, I don't mean, I think, I think that's dandelion. It is dandelion. All right, we'll have to get you next time, dandelion dig you out right 
onwards. So let's go and um, put in this line and start digging. I am seriously concerned and upset that the last part of that video was so flickery. I have no explanation why um, it just came out that way. The video on the camera looked fine, so my apologies. I really am sorry about that. Um, I checked the next video and it it is fine. So I don't know if it was because the camera was hot or um, or whatever. It won't happen again. So. Episode 6 is finishing. Let's see what episode 7 brings. Probably more digging and more clearing of the pond. And let's hope there's more wildlife around. More frogs, newts, toads, dragonflies. Thank you very much indeed for watching. One last uh, request again. Please chat to me in the comments. It's really, really encouraging to, to read what you have to say, to reply and share what you have learnt and passing on to everybody else that uh, comes along this way. Do take care and enjoy the weather. Bye bye.